Hi, my name is Chris Gamble, and I'm on the Developer Relations team here at Hologram. And I'm Mikey Everclyde, and I'm part of the success team. And today we're going to be talking about asset tracking, which is a new kind of subset of all cellular devices that we're covering here in the next couple of months at Hologram. And in fact, we've actually been writing about it as well. There's an article, What is Cellular Asset Tracking? Very original title by myself. Uh, but we kind of cover just a high level view of what's going on there and what's in the space and what people can expect from there. And we'll be talking more about it and you know, we'll discuss some of the things here. So uh, we see a lot of our customers actually using cellular connectivity to do asset tracking on a regular basis. Mikey, how would you actually describe asset tracking? Yeah, so I'd say there's probably two big camps when it comes to asset tracking. Um, some of like the more like low volume asset tracking, so pet tracking, kid tracking, or mm -hmm. uh, car tracking, kind of like the, the hobbyist or develop, like small developers that um, buy some off the shelf components or develop their own little component and track that. And then we have the more enterprise users who uh, are tracking fleets and um, heavy machinery, equ like expensive equipment. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like higher grade, higher precision um, asset tracking. But both um, obviously have the same idea of putting a point on the map. Right, point in the map. That's what we keep saying. So uh, today we're going to actually be looking at a little bit of you know some of the solutions that we've seen, uh, and you know both DIY solutions and uh, commercial off the shelf solutions. We'll be doing more of that. We'll be doing more analysis of the off the shelf solutions into the future here. But let's start and take a look at some of the stuff that we can do today with hologram stuff. How about that? Yep, sounds good. So let's start off with uh, my favorite, the hologram dash. Um, for those of you who don't know, the hologram dash is a microcontroller that's cellular enabled. Um, so the nice thing about this is that using the uBlocks module and its cell locate function, you have um, a, a, a location uh, tracking up to one kilometer um, in accuracy, so one kilometer radius. And that's without anything else. It's just using the cell modem. Exactly, which is fantastic. But obviously, um, if you want to go beyond like that neighborhood range, mm -hmm. you want something a little more granular, you can actually pair it with some of these other um, GPS breakouts. So this specific example is the Adafruit GPS breakout, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then the two of them talk to each other to then get a, per, uh, a precise location. Um, and then using the hologram dash, you can send all that information to the hologram dashboard, our cloud, uh, um, our cloud solution, to then keep track of all that information. What's the relative accuracy of a GPS then? So GPS is about five meters or 17 feet, mm -hmm. um, which is, for most use cases, very, very good. Yeah, right. So you know if you're in a house or not in a house. That kind exactly. Of thing. So if you're tracking your pet, your bike, you'll know, like, you'll be able to find it um, it. within five meters. Right, right. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, are there, what, else, what else can we use, Mike? <laughs> yeah, so um, for those of you who need uh, a little bit more uh, heavy computing power, um, and I guess like battery isn't a huge issue, we do have the Hologram Nova. Again, for those of you who don't know, the Hologram Nova is a USB modem that is meant to be used with single board Linux computers. And we have a fantastic um, Python SDK uh, to develop with that. So just like the Dash, you can use the, the, a GPS breakout um, and use that information to then send it to the cloud and figure out where your device is. The mm -hmm. advantage of using the Nova is that um, you have more complex or heavy computing power. So right. you can do a lot of like onboard computing um, of information. So I guess whatever you might need that right. for. Right. So if you want to do other sensor fusion, get even more accuracy, or if you wanted to tie into APIs, you could do that directly on on the computing module versus up in the cloud. Exactly. Very cool. Okay. And actually, so uh, we actually, as part of this this thing we're doing with asset tracking, we actually uh, have a new uh, team member, and Mohib will be doing some software integration of this stuff. I think actually using the Dash. I'm double check on all that stuff, but. Uh, Exciting to see we'll have a DIY solution that people can come and join in and follow along with as well. So mm -hmm. that's great. Okay, so what about if someone buys third-party hardware and wants to get onto the hologram uh, network? What, what about them? Um, yeah, so for third-party hardware, I guess the step after um, the hologram solutions would be some of the other um, cellular developer solutions. So okay. we have, for example, um, this PyCom solution where you have this PyCom board that has its own little um, GPS breakout board. Um, and you can see that here. So something like that where you would insert the SIM onto this module and with the GPS breakout, you'd have the cellular um, asset uh, tracking portion, but also the GPS one. So you'd get the same accuracy as the solution we talked about before. Got it. Um, and this is a fantastic solution, but there are certain solutions that are all built into one uh, module. So Got it. Um, but before you go off of that yeah. one too, uh, mm -hmm. this is interesting too because this is a CAT M1 module as well. So yeah. that uses the Sequence chipset. And that is something that we're very excited about, seeing NB-IoT and uh, CAT-M1. Both are going to be lower power. I mean, this one has 
an ESP32 on it as well, so it's not like <laughs> super low power, but we're going to see more and more stuff like that, and, and that's a very exciting thing, I think, in the asset tracking space specifically. Yeah, no, thanks for reminding me, because um, CAD M1 and BIOT right now are a hot topic, so mm -hmm. definitely um, look out for more information about those. Cool. Okay. So, so now we're moving backwards into older modules, but more integrated, right? Exactly. So this next one that I want to bring up um, is the Adafruit Phonoboard. Mm -hmm. So this is all built into one. So you have right. the cell modem and like, the GPS uh, unit built into one board. Um, so you can have all that information and relay it to the hologram cloud using our embedded API yes. or our REST API. So all this information, all the, the latitude, longitude points um, would be sent to our, our cloud. And then you can use the third party service to then map it onto, for example, uh, Google Earth or uh, Losan also has a uh, GPS uh, superposition onto a real real world map. Awesome, awesome, okay, great. And so this is a 3G as well, so not necessarily as low power, but very capable and all in one. Exactly, okay. and this is still like, an embedded solution, so it would be low, uh, less power than something like a, a Raspberry Pi. Right, Raspberry Pi with that 2.4 amp uh, brick, yeah. Exactly. When you're drawing that much, <laughs> that's like, uh, you know, maximum 10 watts, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe not as battery friendly, but very easy to get started with. So. Yeah, and again, it also, also always depends on like, the use case, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, and then this last one um, is made by our friend Tim Wu, um, and it's an Arduino shield um, that you just uh, insert a SIM card into here, plug it, plop it up on top of the Arduino Uno or Arduino Uno compatible boards, uh, program it with Arduino IDE, mm -hmm. and then same thing as before, you can use our embedded API to send that information over to our cloud. Right, um, and this one is also NB-IoT, I believe. Uh, yes. So yes. that one is the A. So 7000 A is for America. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So definitely uh, you have to make sure that yeah, all these uh, modems sometimes are meant for only certain bands. So mm -hmm. just make sure that before you click the purchase button, you read all the information. Right. So that is important to note too, is that it's based on hardware you need to know where it works. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, with the SIM card, we actually, the, our SIM card works across all these things. So if you have an A, C, or E with those NBIOT, uh, as long as there's coverage in the region for NBIOT, and you're using a hologram SIM card, it should work. So uh, if you have any problems, you can always go to our community forum, but that's a really good starting point, knowing, mm -hmm. knowing that at least the SIM card is taken care of. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then for those of you who don't necessarily want to break out your computer and start coding, there are some off-the-shelf solutions. Okay. So um, one that we found in AliExpress um, is this little puck that I have here. Um, and you can see that you insert the SIM card there. It's got its little battery. And when you flip it over, um, it's pretty inconspicuous. Mm -hmm. So um, that's t some type of thing that you toss into your backpack or um, your kid's lunchbox if they keep on losing their lunchbox. And um, that will send out uh, the information, but it's a little harder to integrate with the hologram dashboard. Right. Um, so unless you have access to the firmware or the software, these, uh, these off-the-shelf devices usually have their own cloud component. Yes. So this one and the next one I'll show you have their own iPhone slash Android app, um, and that's where you would receive all the information. So one thing to keep in mind, um, depending on what solution you're looking for. Great. Um, and then this other one, which is actually one of my favorite off-the-shelf solutions, but um, why? Is, is a pet tracker. One, because I love animals, but it's also the MyKey pet. MyKey. So, Just um, like you, huh? Exactly. Yeah. So same thing as before. You insert our SIM card into that, and that has both the cell module, but also the GPS unit to give you those coordinates. Mm -hmm. um, and this one comes in a leash, so you put that around um, your pet's neck, and then you, you're able to know uh, where they went. and. Um, if they're out exploring, when they're going to come <laughs> right, back, you right. can kind of keep track of their adventures uh, on Google Maps, which I think is super entertaining. That's great. And this is good, too, because we've been showing uh, kind of the levels of integration that we have with Hologram, right? So in the first case, it was our hardware. So in that case, you'd be using our, our you know, branded hardware, our uh, uh, SIM card like Mikey's showing here, and then our uh, software services. In the second version, it's someone else's hardware, but then our cloud, or sorry, our connectivity and our software services. In the last one, it's just connectivity. And those are really the most common cases that we see. Usually people aren't using just our hardware or just our software services, although you are able to. So mm -hmm. it's good to know on all these, all these fronts. Exactly. Awesome. Well, this has been, uh, this has been great. So what, what else should people know? Anything else? Uh, yeah, I just recommend people read the documentation that they have. So a lot of the issues that we have are people who buy off-the-shelf solutions and yeah. expect all the information to go into the hologram cloud. And sometimes the firm you just can't modify the firmware. So right. just be aware of that. Um, and that's good too because uh, Mohib. So Mohib's going to be building a DIY solution, which is all you know, all using our components, other people's components, that kind of things. I will be actually evaluating many of these commercial off-the-shelf solutions, uh, you know, the stuff that they're using in industry, and actually taking those and getting them onto the cloud. And I will definitely be 
using Mikey's expertise for that. Uh, because like you said, you know, it's where you are in the software stack, how much you understand of that things, and following the directions are really important. Yeah, big exactly. Thing, big things are like setting APN, it's a very common one, mm -hmm. and uh, pointing at the right the cl cloud endpoint. Exactly, yeah. So like our embedded API tells you like what URL, what TCP port to talk to. So um, there is, like we said, a fusion of different technologies. Mm -hmm. So you just got to know a little bit about everything. But um, once you go through it with the documentation that we're going to be providing and creating in the future, mm -hmm. um, we're going to try to make it as simple as possible for whatever solution you're looking to deploy. That's great. All right, so we'll have more stuff about asset tracking in the coming weeks and months. If you have any questions, you can always go over to the community forum. That's community.hologram.io. You can also reach us on social media and everything else around there. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back with more asset tracking stuff in the future. Thank you.